Crew Pros, your single source for high quality, affordable home services. If you are remodeling, repairing, or replacing, Crew Pros are the professionals that can do the job no matter the size. If you are thinking of remodeling your kitchen or bath, needing a new HVAC system, plumbing repairs, flooring, or a complete roof replacement, call Crew Pros. Crew Pros, proud sponsor of the Grizz 901 podcast. Memphis, 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 Nothing but Memphis. Everywhere we go, it's Memphis. Memphis, Tennessee, the beautiful land in the world. And I'm thankful for this this guy who tweeted and said I don't have that fire in my eyes no more. That game right there was for him. That's what I do. I fool people wrong each and every night, and that's for him right there. Hi, this is Tom Izzo at Michigan State, and you're listening to Grizz 901. What's up, Grizz Nation, and welcome back to another episode of Grizz 901, presented by Zach Jaworski State Farm, where they treat you like family. I am your host, Daniel Greer, and we have one of our Grizz lead guys, Jesse Elsie, joining us on the show today. What's up, man? Uh, Not much, not much. Ready? Uh, We've had two off days. It's been the longest day without Grizz basketball since the season started, so I'm uh, looking forward to watch us play the Kings tonight, hopefully get a win. Well, you know who else has had some off time is the Kings. They haven't played till s- since Sunday. That's crazy. Sunday. That's crazy. That, I that, yeah, and dude, that's weird. Yeah, I'm not really worried a ton about the Kings. Yeah. De'Aaron Fox is going crazy. He's averaging over 30 uh, so far through the year, but their their defense is just not great at all. They're I think 20th in defensive efficiency this uh, so far this year, and they don't really have any guys that I'm afraid of uh, one-on-one matchup wise. I think we win all of the matchups except for the Sabonis matchup. So as far as starters go, I'm not too concerned. We should play well, but you know, early in the year, you never know what anybody's doing. And Keegan Murray just started playing, I think last game. And he, you know, I, he was my favorite out of the draft. So. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Keegan Murray's now played two games, and he's uh, and he was out for COVID, you know, protocols and stuff. So anybody's wondering exactly why he would miss the first game of the season. They've only played three um, so far, but he was out. Just make it was just COVID stuff. He had had it before coming into the game. It just was not able to pass the protocols. Uh, but he's played two games this season, and I do like him as well. He's one of the guys that um, really stuck out to me, especially when he was in, you know, played at Iowa. Um, he was a guy who could, you know, get buckets, but it just seemed like there was something missing. And so I'm curious to see how he plays. Uh, I think he's been a very good player for them so far in the two games. He scored 19 and 16 points, uh, which was which has been big. Uh, yeah. But mainly, like he's he's doing a little bit of everything. He's you know trying to get rebounds and assists and stuff like that. So uh, he's doing a little bit of everything for them. So anybody else on that uh, team that you like? Uh, I really like Sabonis. I think he's got a ton of talent. He, the way he rebounds, and he's probably a top th- top three uh, is a, a little bit of a stretch, but probably top five passing big man in the league. Um, so what he can do from the post, uh, whether it's the low post or the high post, um, not just attacking, but even passing the ball is kind of underrated, I think. But he's he has the potential to go off for a bunch. Um, he likes to rebound kind of, and he's a big body bigger than uh, most of the other bigs in the N- NBA right now. So him and Steve-O should have quite the battle on the boards. Yeah. He's uh, he's obviously done a very good job. His first game was horrible. We're talking about Sabonis here. Uh, and then he picked up, you know, the, the second game against the Clippers, um, you know, he's going against Zubach, who's a very good rebounder. He had 10 rebounds. And then against Golden State, which is more of his flow. And that's what I'm going to kind of look at is uh, more of his flow of uh, probably the the opposing team's defender. He's going against guys like, you know, Kevon Looney and James Wiseman who aren't, you know, they're, they're good rebounders. And obviously Kevon Looney just showed out during the Grizzlies game uh, in the playoffs. But that's not normally who that player is. But he had 14 rebounds against them. So he's actually you – know, so he's he's gearing up. You can probably, you know, correlate that to gearing up, getting better, but mainly it's, you know, having a better game against the the style of defense that he likes. And I think the Grizzlies are kind of like that outside of Steven Adams. So let's go ahead and get into uh, a little bit about the the game. And, you know, obviously we're talking about our predictions and stuff, but um, is there a matchup 
within the matchup that you that you're dying to see just visually like for you this is your jam like give me those two guys i'm watching anytime they're on the court those are the two guys i'm looking at yeah uh i think the easy answer but the obvious answer is the deer and fox john morant matchup they're you know two of the most electric players in the nba definitely at the guard spot they're incredibly fun to watch and like uh like I said, they're both averaging over 30 points so far through the year. Um, so they're, you know, their shots are falling, which is going to make it really, really fun to see. And I love watching um, pick and roll in the NBA. Um, mm. I just I think that's really fun when you watch somebody that's kind of mastered the art of the pick and roll. Like uh, uh, I know Chris Paul's got it kind of mastered and he is always fun to watch in a pick and roll. But I think John Morant and Steven Adams are they're finally hitting their stride and they've, they've hit their groove. And then I think, you know, De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis can kind of hit their groove as a uh, pick and rolls. So kind of watching how they switch or drop or hedge all those uh, off the pick and rolls is going to be really, really interesting to see and to see who can, uh, you know, get the last punch. But I do think it'll be kind of a, a, a knockdown drag out where everybody's going to be going for the rim and whoever can get the last shot will win. Yeah, the, the, those two, that, that is the obvious choice, right? And that those are the two that when they're on the court, they have all defenders, their eyes are on them, the coaches, the fans, everybody, everybody's watching those two dudes because they're absolutely electric. And I, and I agree with that. Uh, I want to get into some other matchups. And uh, we, obviously I hit on it a second ago, but I love Steven Adams. Um, Sabonis is there as well. Uh, those two guys really know how to, to rebound. And yeah. that's really, you know, the, the two main things that they do best is they're rebounding, uh, making sure they get the ball out. Uh, they're both very good passers, uh, which is which is great to see from the big man position. Uh, but I think that's something to look at. Uh, you know, Sacramento is 0-3, and, and they're going to look to be a very – like they're going to try to come out, right, and, and look good. But yeah. something I'm, something else I'm watching outside of just the two players I'm watching is the, the game – both teams score under 30 points in the first quarter so far on average this year. Okay, small sample size, right? right. One's four games, one's three games. But um, coming off of the biggest rest the Grizzlies have had, okay, and that's two days, yeah. it is with travel out to the West Coast. So that's a little caveat, which could be jet lag in a sense. Um, and so I look at the Sacramento Kings team, okay? They're 0-3 back against the wall. They have to come out and look good. But they've also been off since Sunday. Yeah. Like that screams the first quarter is going to be ugly. Yeah. What say you? Yeah, I, I do think, you know, it's going to take a little bit of an adjustment period. You know, the first five minutes, will, first five, six minutes of the game will be bad misses, some lapses defensively, and just uh, some silly errors just because they haven't been playing in a while. I think that is definitely there. Um, but I think, you know, there's there's some uh, experience on the King side with Harrison Barnes. I think he's probably going to have a pretty big first quarter um, as long as Dylan Brooks doesn't, you know, rattle him as Dylan Brooks, you know, can do. But I think Harrison Barnes will probably be the solid uh, main, uh, like mainstay of their offense for the first quarter while everybody's getting their feet back under him. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, and I think that this game, um, and I'll go ahead and give one of our bets that we have. Ryan and I, if you don't follow us, we are uh, we're we do the main. The, he is my main co-host. He's my he's my main chick, uh, not my side chick, uh, like Nathan is, or my second to side chick, like you might be, uh, Jesse. But um, Ryan and I do a lot of Grizzly stuff, and we put out the the Grizzly player watch, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I'm going to give one of my plays uh, throughout this show, but uh, we have we already have two plays on the actual game so far, uh, and the first one that we have is the first quarter for the Grizzlies to win by a point or more, and that's the first quarter, win by a point or more. You can find it. I know at BetMGM where we've been at, um, and it is minus 120, so if you're a betting person, um, go ahead. They have the Kings have not won a first quarter this entire season. Okay. So they've lost by more than one. I feel good against this because the Grizzlies try to get off to a hot start. They obviously don't always get out to a hot start, but I think they have a little bit more rest than they've had. I think they're coming off a really good win. 
I think they're going against a Kings team who obviously is struggling, uh, but the Kings give up a lot of points in the first, first quarter. And so we don't want to touch the over or the under on that. Ryan has other thoughts. Ryan is all on the under. So if you want to follow Ryan, uh, go ahead. He's, uh, he's all in. He went under on the first half and under on the entire game. I'm not touching that because both teams scare me. Uh, but we expect uh, there to be more points in the second half as well uh, than the first half. So if that's a, something you like, that those it's just too juicy for us to touch those odds. But uh, but yeah, that's one of our official plays. It's going to be on the uh, the first quarter. Uh, the Grizzlies but to win by you know one or more points. Uh, but how do you see this matchup just kind of playing out in general? Like the entire game, give it to me. Like how does this you know how do these matchups work out? I think it, I think it's close for you know a majority of the game. I think you know you might see somebody pop out early in the first quarter, take an early lead. But like you said earlier, like the Kings haven't won a game yet. They're at home and they're you know getting a little desperate, so they're going to be trying to win one. They've and it's got to happen at some point. No team's going zero and eighty two. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm worried it might be a little bit of a a trap game. We've got a couple of days off, but. It's mm. our first big road trip. Um, we're playing a team that just like um, I'll call it what it is. They're not as good as any of the other teams we've played um, yeah. so far this year. So I think it's a little. They might you know look past them and they could get hurt there. So I I don't expect uh, a big discrepancy in the score um, for a majority of the game. And I I ultimately you know the homer in me says we're gonna win, but I really wouldn't be surprised if we drop it and it's you know an eight point game and we lose just because we're looking past really so okay so i see it completely different um the grizzlies are they're young right and you could attribute that to uh, a team that looks past people maybe but i I think that they have so much swag to them that they are kind of killers too and that's really what comes that comes to mind is um looking at our best player when he is healthy when he is motivated, to which I don't know why he wouldn't be, going against De'Aaron Fox, who's pretty yeah, much a, been a grizz killer in the past. Yeah. Yeah, there's and – th- and that's another piece of it is, you know, Fox loves to run off and score 35 against the Grizzlies. Right. Um, but, you know, I I wouldn't – like, I do think we'll win, but I'm not – it's not a lock for me. I think we could drop it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that, that's wow. kind of where I stand there. So – but but you're on the other side of the fence, so yeah, I'm completely on the other side. And looking at the you know De'Aaron Fox stuff, he is the Grizz killer. But last season, he scored 12 points in each of the two matchups that he played. Um, and I believe there was another matchup or two. I can't remember how many they played, but in the other matchups, he did not play. So uh, just looking at the two matchups, he only had 12 points. So yes, he might be a Grizz killer of the past, but what is he now? Right. Have the Grizzlies kind of caught up to him? Um, so I've already. I've already put my money on this and I think it's Grizzlies minus three. Um, I played that this morning. And so that's our other official play. We're going to go Grizzlies three. Uh, but if you want to dabble a little bit and have some fun, uh, my real predictions, I think this game is definitely going to be ugly in the first half. And I think you're going to see the Grizzlies come out in the third quarter and really show dominance. And I think they're going to get up by double digits. And I think the game's going to be, you know, within five or six, you know, going into the fourth quarter, they make a comeback. You're going to see maybe teams get even. But I think in the end, after Ja comes in around the eight minute mark in the fourth quarter, you're going to start seeing the Grizzlies really separate uh, from the from the eight all the way down to the four minute mark uh, left in the game. And I really think that the Grizzlies win by 10 or more points. And I, I just I think that this team has that killer mentality in them. And yet, I would say, yes, you can look past the Kings, but you have the Jazz. And you could say, like, oh, it's the Jazz. Like, they're not any good. The Jazz are good. Jazz are really good. Like, like, it's weird. And you know what's funny about that is the the Jazz remind me such of the Grizzlies, this Jazz team currently, because they're not supposed to be great. They're not supposed to be good at all. And you know what? Playoff-wise, the Jazz are probably just not a good playoff team. They're probably – if they were to stay together, which we know Danny Ainge is not going to allow that. No, he's going (laughs) to change the entire team by the end of next year. So Exactly. Well, no, not even – dude, it's happening in February. No later than February, uh, you're going to see this whole team kind of broken up, um, and they'll probably – honestly, they'll probably bring in uh, Russell Westbrook 
and take everything they can and then just say, hey, buddy, you're not playing. Sorry, we're going to play anybody else but you. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but yeah, yeah, no, I see I see this game being a uh, a ten plus point win. Um, I think that they have a really good chance to uh, be a statement game, um, and it's not because it's the Kings. I think it's because why the Grizzlies, who I think are really good, are only favored three points, and I think that's I think it's a weird number. And usually when it's weird, I stay away. Uh, but but I, I believe in John. I believe in uh, Bain, who is a really good matchup here, and he's my you know my biggest matchup player uh, coming to this game. I think he really can go off again. Uh, but yeah, I, I see this being a really good game from them. I think that their matchup is is really good here uh, compared to maybe in the past when they have maybe overlooked him. I don't think this Kings team is overlooked anymore. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just I'm also a little concerned about the legs. If uh, Contra doesn't play, we've got already Zaire's out. We don't have Jaron, so we're just kind of thin. Um, at the we're just kind of thin is what I was a little bit worried about. And we've had guys been playing you know, 35, 40 minutes. Well, I guess more closer. It's been closer to 35, but early on, you know, your legs aren't completely under you. You're still getting adjusted to playing a full season. And I don't know. That that's what's got me a little. Uh, concerned yeah no I, I agree completely like i'm not saying i'm not scared yeah <laughs> okay i yeah. am scared uh the NBA but at I, this point you know you really can't look past anybody like at the beginning of the year you would think oh yeah the jazz that's that's a win that's yeah two wins that we've got under our belt but jazz are good marketing is a killer so yeah you really can't like there's a bunch of parody in the league so yeah no, I agree. All right, so you're you're calling. Let's just make sure we're clear. So you're saying you could see this being a Kings win. Would you say I, Kings yeah, win? Yeah, I, I can see it. Predicting it? No, 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 no. Not predicting, but wouldn't God. be surprised. All right, so you predict a Grizzlies win. Not surprised if the Kings win. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go Grizzlies win. Not surprised if it's a 10 or more point win. All right, okay. we'll go on those. Uh, let's get into something you just talked about with the uh, the injuries. Uh, Grizzlies injuries, you have, you know, Zaire Williams out four to six weeks. Um, it has been said that it's patellar tendonitis uh, from the Grizzlies PR. Uh, what's say on you? Are you? Is that scary? Because that you know, young player, patellar tendonitis. Young guy, tendonitis. Yeah. I'm, I'm not worried. He's a young guy. Um, they they bounce back quick. Um, not not too, <laughs> too worried. Um, you know, it could – he, I don't think Zaire's got an injury history, so I'm really not concerned yeah. about it um, at all. You know, if you know Jaron gets a setback, I'm I'm concerned. Um, right. But but with Zaire, I think it's just a, a little freak thing. He's out for a couple of weeks. Just I, I think he'll be fine. I I would love to have him because he made some big strides in the off season. We saw it in the summer league. He was looking a lot more confident in the preseason. Um, and I really was intrigued by what that could mean for our offense as a whole. Um, but I guess I'll have to wait four to six weeks to see how that works. Yeah. So uh, the four to six weeks thing is what makes me feel better. And, I, and I'll explain why is because yes, you can say like, this is the injury and you can go on your Google machine and fire it up and say, put tendonitis, how long were you hurt for? What, what is somebody we look at? But when the Grizzlies, they actually say four to six weeks. It means they're saying because he probably could play in two weeks, right? Maybe three. But we're saying four to six weeks for the simple fact that we want him to know in his camp. We want everybody to understand he is not going to play in the next month. For the simple fact that he's one of our young players, he's one of our core guys. We want to make sure that he is able to be healthy and the best possible version of himself when he gets back. Um, if it does go past the four weeks, it gets a little worrisome. Um, if it goes past the six weeks, I think yeah. we got some issues. Um, I think that's really what would scare me. But before then, I think we're good. Um, give me a prediction real quick. All right. I'm putting you on the spot. How long he's going to be out? Nope. Uh, nope. Not that. Who comes back first, Zaire or Jaron? Oh, that's tough because, oh, man, the last one I was on, we were talking before, the last pod I was on, and we were talking before and we were saying, you know, the time frame is about Thanksgiving and that's about right. what this is given. I think, you know, hopefully, oh, gosh, I'm going to say Zaire's back. 
Wow. I think I, like I think it. we're going to take our time with Jaron, make sure he's fully ramped up. Um, and we are real cautious with him. We should have put him in bubble wrap in the off season, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I have a full stance on this, but uh, just so I can go opposite and uh, we can kind of have some beef. We'll go, I'll go Jaron on this. Uh, he keeps saying these cryptic messages of, Oh, like this guy is, you know, or he's saying like, Hey, I'm back soon. And then it's like sooner question mark. And then the, I, uh, yeah, uh, listen, I don't know what Jaron's got up his sleeve, but I I'm going mean, to, I'm going to ride with trips here. Okay. I, I hope so. I hope so. I'm just, All right, so the, the other guy who just popped up on the, uh, the injury list has been Zaire Williams, not Zaire Williams. We just went over him. Sorry. It's been, a, you know what? Last night it was my daughter's birthday. Shout out to Penelope. Uh, it was my daughter's birthday, and literally, it's been a busy, busy day. It's been a busy week leading up to her her birthday. But uh, John Conchar, all right. So he is questionable with uh, shoulder soreness. Yeah, yeah. Is I don't even issue? know. Yeah, I don't even know how that happens. Um, he's questionable, so like he he could play. Um, I'm imagining that he does play. Uh, I, kind of in my head, I've got him playing. I if he comes out, I don't think it'll be more be more than just like a game or two. Um, but it's a it's a little little disappointing because he had played so well in the first couple of games. I don't want to say like I'm mad at him. I can't be mad at somebody getting hurt. <laughs> um, but you know he had shown a lot of um, the same stuff that he was showing last year, just with an extended role, and he had he's doing the dirty work on the defensive end. He's grabbing rebounds like he always does. Um, but I think he just fit that starting unit when we didn't have Dylan Brooks so well, because he was willing to make the extra pass and he played within himself and played within his role in a really good way. Um, and I thought it was really nice to have that kind of consistent and defensive minded player that was willing to crash the boards with Steve-O because he, as much as I love him, Steve-O can't grab every rebound in the game. So right. you need somebody else to, jump down there and you know jaws running out in transition so yeah no i agree i i, I, don't, I don't think it scares me I, questionable is weird though like i don't know what's going on with his shoulder and his shoulder you know soreness so you can't really get into too much of it but it's just weird that it just popped up on there these guys have gone through you know three games in four days uh most on the road so it's a lot of issues uh but I didn't see – is there anything that we saw out of that last game? Because I don't think I saw anything that came out of that that win against the Nets that really would stick out to show like, hey, yeah, he um, he popped up. He didn't really play as much. He played 26 minutes, which is uh, six most on the team. Um, yeah. He played well. There's nothing weird that I see uh, on here. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, so anything you I saw? I didn't see him. I can't even remember him hitting the deck or anything like that at all. So no. – uh, yeah, there's nothing that like is sticking out to me, and I haven't seen anything on Twitter or anywhere else like identifying something where he hurt himself. Um, but you know, it could have been just like in one of the weightlifting sessions he lifted too much, and you never know. Got that, got that jitty cling. Yeah. Um, all right, I think we have actually found out the reason jitty is out uh ryan in the chat says uh his shoulders are sore from carrying the team uh shout out ryan he's uh there's no telling what he's doing right now but um he's out here in the chat so uh speaking on that if you are uh go to youtube uh hit us up in the chat be more than happy to answer any questions you got uh, but yeah we've uh we've tried to change up some things uh, because none of our statistics were tracking. So we've did away a little bit with the Twitter Periscope stuff you can watch live because we can't actually see the chat. Uh, and so because I couldn't see it, I want to get away with it. I'm uh, Not get away, get away with it, get rid of it, uh, get away from it. And uh, so now we're trying to run everything through YouTube so we can actually see the chat and see people asking questions because I was told from uh, fans that they were asking questions, they were saying stuff, but we weren't responding and I had honestly no clue that any of that was happening. So uh, that's why. And so if you are listening or watching somewhere else, come over to YouTube. Um, and if you're on the podcast, thank you. As always, uh, the podcast is back to booming as always. And so thank you all. I uh, couldn't do it without you. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, give a little bit about our presenting sponsor. And that's Zach Jaworski State Farm, um, where they do treat you like family. They treat me like family. 
And so we're going to have to talk Jesse into going over and getting a quote. We're going to make him the guinea pig. We're going to go make him go undercover, ask for a quote, see what they can do for him. Uh, and then he'll report back to us. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, Who knows? yeah. We'll see. see if they can uh, beat my rate. Do they have a uh, dog insurance? Maybe I see, I see you playing with a dog over there. Um, yeah. Yeah. She's uh, trying to get some attention right now. So I'm just making her fetch and keeping her quiet. That's, that, that works. Well, uh, go check out Zach Jaworski state farm. If you need any insurance at all, uh, whether it is, you know, it's not boating season, but you might want to make sure you uh, check out your boat stuff uh, as well as your home, auto, any insurance purposes or any ins insurance uh, issues that you might need. Uh, go check them out. Uh, tell them the Grizz 901 crew sent you. Call them at 901-459-4227. Uh, you can check them out on the web at ZachInsuresMemphis.com and that's Z-A-C-H InsuresMemphis.com. All right, so before we get into our last thing, uh, real quick, um, let me go ahead and share our Grizzly player watch. Uh, my first one's going to be, uh, and it's the only one I have at the moment. I love the Steven Adams rebounds. I think he gets 10 rebounds. The number's 10 and a half. I'm going to stay away for the moment. I'm going to let it fall back to me a little bit. Uh, it's a nine o'clock game out on the West Coast. We might see some you know, lowering of lines as we get closer. Uh, I don't know about 11, but 10 I, I do like. I think that Steven Adams could have a big game. Uh, one guy I do love is going to be um, uh, Desmond Bain. I think he's going to go over 19 and a half points. Uh, they are the Sacramento Kings are the worst against a shooting guard position points wise. Um, and then how does he get a lot of his points? Where did he just go off from? I think on the road, Desmond Bain, three pointers. They're the second worst at the three allowing three pointers. So, um, I could see him chunking up again, um, and having, you know, eight, maybe nine attempts cashing in at least three, maybe four. Uh, and so I like his points because he has been getting to the rim even more. So that's going to be one of our, uh, locks, uh, for sure. That's going to be on the Grizzly player watch is over 19 and a half. I got it at minus one Oh five at one point. Um, but the other guy, the other shooting guard, call him a two, call him a three. We have the Dylan Brooks Chronicles and we were literally two minutes for coming on the show. And you said, I have something I want to share. And I said, go ahead. Let's just talk about it now, but it's about an article. Jesse writes articles for Grizz lead. And so he might be coming up with something like this. But let's talk a little bit about Dylan Brooks. Uh, go ahead and share your thoughts and let's talk through it on the air. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's time for the Grizzlies to graduate from the Dylan Brooks chronic or the, the Dylan Brooks experience. We've we've had it for a while. And I just, you know, there's been there was talk at the end of the year that they were going to speak with him and get him to understand his role, that he's not number one or number two or even really number three anymore and I don't think that has gotten through to him and you know he's only played a couple of games as as has everybody but you know the one the, yeah the ball stagnates when when it gets in his hands it he's a black hole it goes up or he turns it over um he's it, we just play offense differently. I'm not saying Dylan Brooks isn't a good basketball player. I just don't think he fits Taylor Jenkins offense anymore. Um, okay. So I think it's time to start shopping him around, seeing what we can get for him. Even if we need, if we get more draft picks or if we get expiring contracts or take on a load, I just think for the good of the team, it might be better to move on from him. Okay. Well, it, I did it's hard to say, but because he's, been our long-standing grizzly and he's yeah. the heart and soul of you know grit and grind now and everything but i'm kind of tired of it all right so i'm going to disagree and agree so let me uh let me explain myself real quick first i disagree he's not the not the heart and soul of the the grit and grind whatever whatever the grizzlies are doing he's actually the opposite like i think he's just out there running around uh making noise and doing a lot of crazy stuff which in the end translates to maybe being a pest on defense um, I'm going to back your thoughts real quick before I, you put me in the other spot of life that I didn't want to be in. And that is standing up for Dylan Brooks. So, um, this will be the first and last, I hope, um, Dylan Brooks was a, he was a plus seven in that game. It wasn't great. Yeah, but everybody, everybody was plus high. Everybody no, else played every other starter. And he was the worst of the starters. Okay. I'm not saying that's good. I'm just saying he was plus three. It wasn't great. Um, he was over five from three. Two of 13 from the floor, just in general. Um, but I will ask the question, okay? So that's like, I agree with you. He wasn't good, okay? 
he was after the game getting up the shots as everybody saw in the videos. Uh, but the Grizzlies scored 134 points against a team who is legitimately considered to be a really good team in the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, they have two amazing superstars. Yep. Let me play the devil's advocate on the other side. And I don't want to be in this position, but I have to. Desmond Bain has not played well this season until Dylan Brooks came back. So Dylan Brooks is back on the team. And then Desmond Bain goes off for 38 points, goes 10 of 11 from deep. Obviously looks great. He was he was 12 of 20. Uh, no, sorry, wrong person. Uh, he was 8 of 11 from deep, 14 of 21 overall. Okay. he Desmond Bain shows up now. It's magically, it's when Dylan Brooks comes back. I think there's correlation there because Desmond Bain's been having to be our best defender on the perimeter since Dylan was gone. So yeah. if you're taking that away, what, what, what's happened? We're, we're going to just, uh, you know, throw in the towel and Desmond Bain just takes a step back this year? No, I, one, I don't, I don't think there's a correlation. I think Des was due. He had three bad games and then he finally was able to pop off. But, I mean, he, he didn't score all 38 while Dylan Brooks was on the floor. So, um, there, there's a little – I have a little pushback there. But, I mean, I think when Zaire comes back, he's going to be taking on more responsibility guarding the good two guard on the team because he's bigger, um, a little bit more athletic, or at least he's got more intangibles. He's, he's got a bigger wingspan. He's taller. He's a little bit mm -hmm. uh, quicker laterally, I think that'll be taken off of him. And then Conchar is also was doing a good job. Well, I don't, he was, you, he was doing, he was in front of Kevin Durant. Uh, he was in front of him. He was, was letting him go by, but he was in front yeah. of him. Really at the end of the day, when Kevin Durant is like that, that's all you can do is just hope and pray that he's not going to put it in your face the way he did. Um, but I, I mean, the defense, the effort was there from Conchar who was guarding the best defender. Um, when Bain was on the floor with him. So I have a little pushback there as well. Uh, I just – I think Dylan Brooks hurts more than he helps. Okay. Well, um, so I, I agree and I disagree. Like right now, Memphis has uh, next to the last most uh, points per game allowed, right? And so that our defense has been an issue. Yeah. Last year when we started the season, our defense was the issue. And so – um, I, I agree completely. Like our defense has, has not been good, but I don't know if I don't know what you do with a guy who really I don't know what you're getting back for him. Like, yeah, is it best to just go head into the wall? We're going to figure this out with him. Obviously, they can trade him, and I know that. Like we, yeah, I think most people would trade. agree to. I would, yeah. I would agree. Most people want to trade him, but what are you getting back for a, a Dylan Brooks right now? I don't. So I don't. You think, said pennies on the dollar, and I, I would give I, I would give him up for pennies I, on the dollar. But I think wow. even even if not, you know, he's an expiring contract, and that is a premium in the NBA because there's always somebody great coming out in the free agency. That if you've got, I don't I don't even know how much Dylan Brooks is making. I think it's like twelve 10, million this year. I think. Yeah, I'll look and, real quick. Keep going. Yeah, he's he's making you know ten million dollars. If you can trade for that, and then that frees up ten million more dollars that. That's the difference between somebody who's getting, you know, a max deal and somebody who's getting just 25, 30 million a year. Yeah. So I think there's, I think that is the ultimate value. I don't think people are going to be trading for Dylan Brooks. They're going to be trading for a $10 million expiring contract. Hmm. Um, okay. So he's making 11, four, uh, yeah. which obviously is, you know, that's, that's doable. Um, he is on the last year, right? So you're not really, so there's nothing long term that matters, in my opinion, to a to, to this player. Like yep. long term, I worry nothing about it. Okay, but I'm I'm looking at the player this year, this season, and I don't I don't know if he's if it's the worst thing to have him if they can figure out his role. But I, I I'm on your side saying that if for some reason he was to be an issue and not figure out his role in this team, then yes, you have to get off of Dylan Brooks. What you get back for him? Pennies on the dollar is not what I want, okay? Because you're already going to you're you're going to give up him at the end of the season for nothing. So right. pennies on the dollar means nothing to me because I don't I want to only give up Dylan Brooks if I can get something that interests me whether it's a player like a, a draft pick that's really good, 
whether it's a young player that has time to develop and moving out him is great. Um, I think that the best thing that if it did happen is if Dylan Brooks does leave for whoever you bring in a guy like Zaire who can fill into his role and feel comfortable. And I like that. Uh, you give yeah. him more time, you give the rookies more time, but uh, to get somebody back 11, let's say 11 and a half million. I think that's going to be, you could get a decent player. What you get back. I don't know. One guy I, I wish we could get, get is a guy like Jordan Clarkson. We're going to see him uh, going up uh, very soon, right? Against the jazz. He's been, he's playing well. He shoots the ball from deep. Well, um, he's not the biggest of guards, and he's uh, he has a contract with Rich Paul as his agent. So that scares me in general. But uh, outside of Rich Paul being his agent, I do think that a guy like Jordan Clarkson could be the, the guy that you match up with a Brandon Clark, a guy you match up with Tyus Jones, spread the court a little bit, and then you can throw in somebody like Desmond Bain. And then you have two lethal shooters. You have a guy that's going to roam the post a little bit. And then you have a Santi Aldama. You have John Contra. You have a little bit of something. Uh, I don't think that they're going to give him up, but I think you could get Dylan Brooks and maybe a pick to get Jordan Clarkson. Yeah. But it's weird because people would, normally would have said Dylan Brooks is probably better than Jordan Clarkson, but I, I don't know if I see that anymore. Yeah, no, the uh, the trade that I've seen you know, in the last year that's most intrigued me was Cam Johnson because the Suns were shopping him last mm -hmm. year, and they're making I – I think I saw that they were making about the same money, and Cam Johns Johnson is younger, shoots the ball better – um, and can play within a system. You know, he's been coming off the bench um, a little bit for the Suns, or maybe his whole time he's come off the bench. But I think he would fit in rather well with the Grizzlies. I don't know if they're still looking to shop him, but, I mean, I don't really know what the Suns' whole prerogative is this year because with yeah. the whole Richard, or Robert Sarver stuff and because um, they were shopping Jay, Jay Crowder. I don't know what they're planning to do, um, but if we could, you know, possibly flesh that out but yeah i mean a deal to get a player back or even i mean personally i'm fine with just taking anything about <laughs> even if it's going to be you know the same thing like we've got with uh, danny green who's going to ride the yeah. bench until february because he's hurt like i'm fine just not having the black hole um come in and play yeah. 30 minutes a night because i think yeah. defensively like we've talked about it i think really the key to our defense is Jaron Jackson Jr. And until he gets back, I think defensively we're not going to be the best because the the block Panther um, was so good from the weak side, um, mm -hmm. deterring shots, um, that there's there was an immense amount of value added when he's on the floor. So, yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. The Dylan Brooks Chronicles – Lives on, and it will be, honestly, it'll be an ongoing thing throughout the year. Let's go to our last thing we have is our uh, game predictions for uh, the Jazz. Grizzlies take on the Jazz. It's a Saturday night game uh, on the 29th. Uh, and so it's at 8 o'clock, which is a little bit earlier. And I laugh at this because, and I think I talked about this in the last podcast, the fact that the Grizzlies are playing the Jazz out on the West Coast, in a sense, right? The, the Jazz are a West Coast team considered. Um, at 8 o'clock is laughable to me because usually these games are at 9 or 9.30 because they want to grab that West Coast viewing, you know. And now it's funny because the Grizzlies are going out and, they don't, and they, they're playing the Kings at 9, okay? I get that. I understand. And that's probably going to work out schedule-wise. I don't know who else. Uh, let me see who else is playing to uh, really uh, give my my point. Uh, yeah, so NBA TV, uh, they have the Heat and Warriors matched up with the Grizzlies, okay? And so that's that's fine, okay? That's yeah. a good game. The Heat have not looked good lately, honestly, um, until um, Damian Lillard got hurt last night. Uh, but then you talk about the Jazz having to play an early game in a sense, and the yeah. Grizzlies, they're saying that, hey, the Jazz are not good. Let's go ahead and grab all the Memphis viewing that we can possibly get. Uh, and yeah. so it's it's funny that we're seeing that because 10 years ago, this never would have happened. I don't care how bad the Jazz are. 10 years ago, we're not having an 8 o'clock game out on the West Coast. We're just not. Mm -hmm. So uh, so props to the Memphis fans uh, and props to John Morant fans, Grizzlies fans, everything, uh, to really push the number and the viewing to get that at an eight o'clock game. I love it because I can watch a game 
kids are just going to bed. I know you don't have that issue. Kids no. are just going to bed. I can turn on the TV uninterrupted for three hours. I go to bed by 11 o'clock. It's amazing. It's, it's, oh, yeah. It's that good stuff. makes the following morning a whole lot better when you're not up until 12, 1230 watching yes. the Grizzlies. Um, yeah. Whether they win or lose, it's it can be stressful nonetheless. So, yeah, no, yep. I'm super excited that we're getting earlier games out on the West Coast because, you know, Memphis fans want to watch it and aren't really wanting to stay up that late. So uh, it's exciting that we're, you know, being getting the relevance that we have kind of earned through the last year. So a little relevance. I love it. All right. So the Grizzlies take on the jazz and a uh, one day off back to back. They played them on a two game kind of homestand for the jazz. Um, the jazz will play the Grizzlies, the host of Grizzlies on Saturday at eight o'clock, as I said, and then Monday on Halloween uh, at eight o'clock as well. So um, let's go ahead and, uh, let's encompass both games, right? We're going to have another show to talk about maybe what's happened in the first game, uh, but you will probably not be on here at the uh, the second game. So let's go ahead and encompass both games. Uh, give me straight predictions from the top on both games, just overall, and then we'll kind of dig in a little bit of the matchup, and then we'll get out of here. We should win them both. Uh, wow. We, sh- oh? uh, we, should, we should win them both. We are better than the Jazz. The Jazz are playing great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Lowry Markkinen is a dog. He's averaging over 20. He's feasting. And I love Colin Sexton ever since he was in high school on that AAU team and he told Penny that Jaden Hardaway was trash. I've Mm. been a huge fan of Colin Sexton (laughs) for just being a a monster. But we're better than they are, so we should win. Um, If we – now, if we beat the Kings, I think we drop a game against them. I don't think we're going to have a perfect home, uh, perfect road stretch. I think we'll drop one. So we'll either trade here or go one and one with the Jazz, or we'll drop one to the Kings. Um, just that's kind of how I see it. But okay. if if you know we lose lose tomorrow or tonight, I think we win both uh, Saturday and Monday. Nice. Okay. So I, yeah, no, I like that. So you're you're predicting this road trip. Uh, three game road trip, I do believe, right? Let me make sure this four, but... four game because you got the Trailblazers on uh, Wednesday. So, um, yeah. yep. So we'll go just the three game road trip. We'll go October. What's left of October? So the Grizzlies are right now three and one. Yep. So you would expect them to be six and two. I guess five, five, and two. Five, five and two, two, right? Yep. All right. So five and two coming into November. That's your prediction. Yep. I'm actually on the same thing, um, and I I didn't think I would be because, honestly, it's it's the Jazz and the Kings, right. but I think that the Grizzlies have a really good chance to play well against the Kings, and I've said that already. And so, coming into the Jazz, I think they're pesky enough, and they're led by a guy like Mike Conley, who that's the type of, the type of team they are. And I was saying earlier, I don't think I ever proved my point. Uh, because that's normally what I do in life. But uh, Mike Conley has been on these type of teams where it's not great group of players, but he's but he's a player who kind of moves the ball, does enough to to really make winning plays. And I think that's the type of player Mike Conley is, even at his age and you know as he's aging. I still think he's that type of player. I hope he becomes a guy who get moved uh, and play for a real contender. Um, even if he's moved to the Lakers, they're not a contender. Uh, maybe, maybe if they added Jordan Clarkson in that trade, maybe that would help them, but I don't know what happens for that. But, um, I think, I think I'm on board with you five and two going into November. Um, I think, I think they're going to win against the Kings and split against the jazz. Um, and I think it'll be the, the first game. I think they lose the first game against the jazz. Yeah, I, I can see that. And then just kind of being a wake up call for us after we get, you know, a, as you're predicting a statement, win. Um, in Sacramento, um, we'll kind of get woken up a little bit when we play the Jazz the first, and then I and then putting them back in their place on Monday on Halloween. <laughs> I, I can I can see that playing out that way, and I do think you know we're talking just October, but for the whole road trip, I think we beat the King or not the Kings, the Blazers. Um, Anthony Simons is good, but I don't think they have too much else going on that I'm concerned about, especially if Dame is hurt for an extended well, period of time. That's the thing with a calf. Um... Dame Dame's probably not coming back in a week. I wouldn't imagine. Yeah. Um, and so I, I would think that Dame's going to be out. That helps the Grizzlies there. I think that road trip is a three and one. 
Uh, I don't think that Simons, even though he's looked unbelievable at times, I don't think Simons is going to be enough to put that team over the Grizzlies. But uh, looking at these matchups, uh, Lori Markadon obviously is going off, which has been uh, funny and crazy. And I, I talked to Ryan about this. And Ryan said, uh, that's just what Lori Marketing does at the beginning of the season. And then he kind of goes away. Yeah. Uh, but it's weird that like he's putting up big rebounding numbers. He's also scoring the ball, which has been good. Um, he He's kind of cooled off a little bit from three, which has been big. But is it mainly his size? And so I'm looking at the Aldama matchup, right? Aldama against Lori Marketing. I wouldn't say they're pretty much the same player. I like Aldama in that position because he's a little bit taller. I think he's got more link to him. And so I like Aldama guarding Lori Markin. And are we talking about the Aldama shutdown here? Oh, yeah, I don't know. But it, it's funny that you bring it up because, you know, that's what I was thinking just a couple of seconds ago is if you had told me a couple of weeks ago or before the season started that the first one of the matchups I'd be intrigued to see in October was Santi Aldama and Lori Markinen, I would have <laughs> laughed you out of the building. But here we are, and I, that's what I'm looking forward to. Is I think this is going to be a really good test for Aldama is to see how he plays against a guy who's pretty hot right now and physically is pretty similar to him. They yeah. both uh, can shoot the ball, um, can rebound pretty well, and are lengthy defenders. I don't, I, would, I don't know that I would go to the point of saying that either of them are good defenders, but they're lengthy defenders and they have the potential to be disruptive. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so they play mainly 10 guys um, yeah. in the jazz. And so they do it something similar to what the Grizzlies, you know, are and what they, you know, pretty much run. Um, they don't play you know, Rudy Gay as much, you know, he's, you know, 16. He's yeah. He's under 20 minutes a game as well as a Walker Kessler. Uh, and funny enough, like Colin Sexton, 10 minutes last game, which is, which is a little weird. I, I didn't expect that. And I'm, I'm looking at it now. He's only been at 15 minutes, 19 twice, and then 21. So he's taking a nosedive in his minutes. So I don't know if Colin Sexton is going to be as big of an issue uh, as he's been in the past, but Jordan Clarkson has been playing much better. Mike Conley is just Mr. Consistent. He's not going to do anything crazy. He's not going to, he's not going to really win the game for him, but he's going to put guys in position to be good. Uh, but Malik Beasley, who's been he, – he's killed the Grizzlies oh, in the past, yeah. um, has has been playing well, as well as Taylor, Taylor Horton Tucker has been playing well. Um, and and so it's a little bit of everything. Kelly Olenek is on his team. I had no idea until I started looking at it. Yeah. yeah, it's just – it's crazy how many players they have. And it's funny that a lot of them I look at, I'm like, oh, yeah, they're good against the Grizzlies. They always play good against the Grizzlies, which scares me. And that's why I said we're definitely going to have a split because – there's too many guys on this team that play well against the Grizzlies to not lose a game. Yeah, and you know, a little little revenge game from Rudy Gay, it it could happen. <laughs> I'm not predicting it, but again, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be out of left field for me. It could happen. I don't um, know what Rudy Gay would have revenge on this team. He, he would know nobody. <laughs> yeah, he he has no interest or he has no connection to anybody on the team anymore. But it could happen. Yeah, it could definitely happen. Uh, all right, that's all we have. So pre we're both predicting a uh, a, a two-and-one uh, road trip for the most part, and then probably three-and-one total if you include uh, the full road trip with the, uh, the Blazers. Um, and so we're going into November five-and-two. What kind of grade do you put that on? A, B, C, D? I mean, all things considered, injuries that we've had, no Zaire, only one experience with uh, Dylan Brooks so far. I'm I'm giving it B, B plus. Wow. B? What what could they have done better? Win. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, knowing that you only have to be, you know, twelve to twelve to fifteen games over five hundred to make the playoffs, and they would already be up three. Um, I feel great about that. I'm going to give them an A, uh, just a flat A. Uh, it's not an A plus, right? Because I think they could have won uh, another one of those games. Uh, but the fact that they're they're now three and one, I yeah. say an A. But I, I I expect them to drop if they if they go two and two in this road trip. Obviously that that takes me down a full letter grade on that, and I give them a B. But for the most part, an A right now. I think the team is playing well. Jaw has looked incredible. Uh, I'm going to dig into more of the uh, my player props. If you're following along, uh, we'll, you'll get them at, at the latest an hour before. 
Uh, and the reason is is because the Grizzlies have had major injury concerns. Um, and so Dylan Brooks has kind of slowed down any kind of player props. Um, and so uh, now John Conchars, you know, on questionable. So he's slowing down the, um, the player props from even coming out, uh, even though he is a bench guy. So uh, they'll keep coming out. But we're riding Desmond Bain tonight. Uh, first quarter for sure. Uh, we're going to go Grizzlies uh, to win by one or more points. Uh, and so we'll have more that's coming out. Uh, on this, uh, we expect the Grizzlies to win, um, especially I do. I'm, I got them for you know three. Uh, but one little betting advice, and I've done this, and I did this yesterday, and we did really well at it. Um, if you do want to bet, please obviously do it responsibly. Don't be stupid about it. Don't uh, don't don't put your house, you know, mortgage your house just so you can keep betting. Uh, but what I do like is live lines. Um, so if the Grizzlies, these team are they're both going to go on their runs. OK, and it's going to be ugly at times. Look at the first quarter uh, the, the lines will move drastically at times because this is a three point. You might be able to catch both teams if you really don't know who to pick. Both teams are going to be favored at some point. And so you can take the other team for plus money. And so you can probably grab one for plus one thirty two and the other one for plus one twenty three. And you bet on both of them. You know, you're going to make uh, some some dollars if you really want to do that. But uh, but, you know, the Grizzlies, you can catch them at plus money even money or more uh, on the money line just to pick them to win at some point because I don't expect this game to not be close uh, throughout. So just kind of pay attention to that. All right, Jesse, any articles or anything coming up from you or anything you want to give a shout out to or talk about before we get out of here? Um, Not really. There might be something coming out a little bit later about uh, Grizzlies offense with Ja shooting the three ball the way he has, um, but we'll see. Anything you've seen in this shot, anything different? His knees aren't knocking anymore. That's yeah. uh, one big thing. But I'm just – I'm excited because it's keeping the defenders more honest. You have to stretch out to the three-point line on him now, which makes it a whole lot easier for him to get to the rim if he gets a full lane and doesn't doesn't see four shirts in the paint. So, Oof. Yeah. Uh, as long as he stays on both of his feet, that, that yeah. really excites me. Uh, it scares me when he's not because, dude, it's just – uh, yeah. Anytime yeah, he comes down, like God. High. he jumps so high, he's fallen from a pretty high spot that, you know, it's a lot of damage on those knees and ankles, especially if you're landing on just one. Yeah, um, I agree. All right. So a uh, little prediction on this. And so Ja has hit uh, in four games. He's hit three, five, zero and four Dallas. I don't say that counts because he wasn't really excited to be there. Everybody was tired, exhausted. Three games, four nights. Uh, last game uh, back to back. How many uh, three points do you think Jai has tonight versus the Sacramento Kings who give up the uh, 11 most? Um, and so they're only giving up 11.3, so it's decent. They're giving up a good percentage. So obviously they're not closing out, uh, but they're obviously when they do, you know, when they do shoot, they're trying to allow a lot less than others. But uh, 11.3 isn't terrible, but only allowing 11? Uh, weird. But uh, what say you on Jai? You think he has two, three, three yeah. pointers tonight? I think it's, I mean, I really think two and a half is the number I'd avoid if I was betting on it. If I saw one and a half, I'm hitting over. If I saw three and a half, I'm probably hitting under. Um, two and a half, I'm probably not messing with because it's too close. So I think yeah. anywhere, I think two or three is pretty safe. Yeah, it's at one and a half, minus 160. I'm not touching it too much uh, juice on that bad boy, but yeah. um, no way. But yeah, uh, let's have a good night. Let's have a good game. Uh, I don't have anything else uh, for this. I think it's going to be a really good match. Up in general, I think obviously you have De'Aaron Fox, who is a phenomenal player. Uh, you also have, you know, just Demonis Sabonis, who I love personally as a player, lo love watching him. Uh, and then some other guys that are on this team that can really uh, fill it up, dude. It, it's going to be it's going to be a fun game. Uh, I hope it gets off in the first quarter and just goes crazy. Um, I expect it to be a little, you know, groggy and look a little weird and be in the mud in the first half. Uh, but second half should pick up uh, if the first half doesn't look good. Uh, but that's all we have. Let's go ahead and get all the dubs. I want all the dubs. Just give me yeah, everything. Let's just go 81 and 1. Yeah, yeah, why not? Let's just go. Close it out. Yeah. All right, that's all we got. Be nice. Tell your friends.